Okay, so in the last video we introduced these nine types of interval that you can have, right? The open, the closed, the two types of half open, all the ones that involve infinity. Um, for the most part, that's going to do the job for any sorts of sets of real numbers that you need to describe. It's probably going to be described using one of these. Uh, but there are times where you might need to also combine intervals, right? So you might need to combine more than one type of interval. Um, and an example might be something like this. So maybe, maybe somebody says, all right, what I want you to do is I want you to solve an inequality like x squared is bigger than 4. Okay? And you think about this for a bit. You think about, okay, so what numbers, what numbers can I write down whose square is bigger than 4? Um, we're going to introduce formal techniques for doing this later on once we talk about polynomials and solving polynomial inequalities. We'll see that there is, there is an approach, a sort of a systematic way of doing this. But for now, let's just think about it. Um, what are some numbers I know whose square is bigger than 4? Uh, well, maybe we start with thinking about what are the numbers whose square is equal to 4? Um, 2 squared is 4, right? So the square of 2 is 4. Anything that's bigger than 2, if I square it, I'm going to get something that's bigger than 4. So certainly, if x is bigger than 2, its square will be bigger than 4. Is that the only possibility? Well, there's one other solution to the equation, right? What's the other value of x whose square is equal to 4? The other one is minus 2, okay? So let's think about it. Do we want x to be bigger than minus 2 or smaller than minus 2 if we want the square to be bigger than 4? Well, when you square, the negative goes away. So what we really care about here is the magnitude, right? And as the magnitude of a negative number increases, the actual size of that number as a real number goes down. So we would want x to be less than minus 2, right? So numbers less than minus 2, right? Minus 3, minus 4, right? Minus, uh, minus 7.5, you know, those are all in there, right? So we could have one of those two possibilities. And now you think about how do you write those as intervals? Well, so we would say that we could have the interval from 2 to infinity, or we could have the interval from minus infinity up to minus 2. One of the ways that you might write this is you might use this uh, union notation. So you might write this as, so we might say like this, minus infinity to minus 2. Um, most people tend to write the smaller numbers first, although this doesn't actually matter. You can put it in either order. Union to, to infinity. Okay. So this is just sort of a, it's a stylized U and it stands for union, okay? On the number line, what this would look like on a number line if you were going to write things out is you would be saying, well, what I'm doing is I'm including all the numbers starting at 2 and heading off to infinity, as well as all the numbers that are less than minus 2, so heading off that way, right? So you have two pieces like that. Um, Another, another way you can combine two intervals, right? You might be familiar with union as one of two set operations that gets used, right? Another operation that gets used is intersection. Um, you'll find intersection a little bit less common in calculus texts when you're dealing with unions, and there's a simple reason for that. Um, intersection gives you all the things that are common to two sets. So let's say Somebody asks you to simplify the intersection of the interval from 1 to 3 with the interval from minus 1 to 2. Okay? So if you think about that on the number line, okay, minus 1, 
zero, one, two, three. We have two intervals. Uh, one interval is here. Let me just kind of offset things so we can see them. One of them is there. Okay. The other one is there. Okay. And you want to, when you're doing intersection, you're keeping all the numbers that belong to both. And all the numbers that belong to both are between here and there, right? It's all the numbers which are bigger than or equal to 1, but smaller than 2. So this would be 1, 2. And you'll notice that when you intersect two intervals, you get another interval. It might be an interval of a different type but it's still an interval, right? So you usually don't see intersection notation used very often in calculus textbooks because if you, you know, most of the sets you're working with are intervals. If you intersect two intervals, you get another interval. And most people are going to choose to just write this rather than the more complicated expression you see on the left.